Yo guys, Tom here. Welcome back. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be doing volume two of the Traxxas Sledge, All You Need to Know. And this is an ongoing series where I'm compiling all of the information from my own experience and from other, other people's experience that I see on YouTube or in uh, Facebook groups. And it really just kind of covers the basics for setting up your sledge for the best performance and going over like known issues and uh, repairs and fixes, tips, tricks, things like that. So I wanted to kind of compile everything into one place. So this is volume two of that and I have a list here that I've kind of keep on uh, adding to uh, as I learn more and more things about this and come up with uh, some new fixes and ideas for this. So. So anyway, let's get right into this list. I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. I'm not going to go into very much detail on any of these. If you want more detail, you can check out some of my previous videos where I really get uh, in depth on some of these things. So uh, that being said, let's just get right into it. So hey guys, so first on the list, and this is a well-known issue by now. I think everybody knows about it and Trax is as well aware, but the O-rings on the rear uh, outdrive cups um, you can check my other video on that if you want more information on that, but you basically just have to put O-rings, uh, either Traxxas will send them to you, uh, the part number is 9680 or any 10 mil O-ring will fit into that rear outdrive cup just to limit the amount of movement on those dog bones and prevent them from popping out. So that's that. Uh, thread lock. This is a super important one. Pay attention to this. Do it when you first get your sledge and you should have no more problems going forward, right? I'm gonna show you the areas you need to pay attention to. So basically all of your steering linkage here, under here uh, where your toe link mounts to your bell crank, there's I think three nuts on either side that you're gonna need to remove and apply some blue medium strength uh, thread lock to, as well as where your camber links here mount to the shock towers. They all use that same small nut that it is a nylock nut, but it just doesn't do a good job holding, right? And they keep coming loose and you end up with very sloppy steering and very stop, sloppy linkage. So pull all those off, put some blue Loctite, snug them back up, should be good to go. On that subject, um, motor mount screws. So let's see if I can see here. These elongated slots right here where your motor mount cradle bolts to the chassis. There's four of them. Um, take one out at a time. As long as your mesh is good, you shouldn't have to mess with the mesh at all from the factory. Hopefully they set it right. Pull one out at a time. They do have, at least mine had some blue Loctite on them, but add a little bit more and uh, snug them back up. Use a good quality tool. You don't want to round out the, uh, the heads on those <clears throat> or you can have issues going forward. I don't think I would use red on that because it would be an issue removing them if and when you want to change your pinion size. But just put some good strength, uh, medium strength Loctite on it, snug them up nice and tight, and uh, you shouldn't have any issues going forward. Uh, on the subject of the motor, you always want to double check the pinion grub screw. Mine was okay. I tried breaking it loose. I really couldn't do it without applying a ton of force, so I left mine alone. It was fine. So some of these things you might want to just check. The motor mount screws, I think I would definitely pull out no matter what and add more Loctite to it. You don't want an issue with that mesh. Uh, you know, moving while you're driving this thing, you're gonna chew up some gears, so. But the pinion um, grub screw, if it's really hard to get out, there's a good chance it's fine. You shouldn't have to mess with it. If it comes out easily, take it out, throw some red Loctite on it, put it back in, and just know that the next time you touch it, if you use red, you're gonna have to heat it up, right? So um, that's that. Uh, one other area I will mention, um, if you look on your center drive shafts, so at the front and the rear where they attach to the pinion where that comes out of your diff, you're going to have a little pin screw on either side. Mine were okay, but some guys have reported that theirs were loose and they came out while they were driving. And that's a pretty common thing on a lot of RC cars, so no big deal. You can get to it uh, pretty easily from the side here. Just pull them out. But again, if, if you're having resistance pulling them out, they're probably fine. And you really shouldn't have to do it. But if you're going to take them out, Apply some more blue medium strength Loctite on them, put them back in and should be good to go. Um, so that should pretty much cover it in terms of thread lock. Okay, so next on the list is um, diff fluid. So people are reporting that there's varying levels of fluid in the diffs from the factory. So it's not a bad idea, especially if you notice any weird kind of driving traits, like your front tires are ballooning like crazy and the back ones aren't so much, or you notice any weird handling characteristics, you might want to just check the fluid levels in your diffs. Center should have uh, 20 mil, front and rear should both have uh, 50K. 
and they should be about three quarters full. They don't need to be full to the top um, and they shouldn't really be, you know, only a quarter full either. So aim for like about that three quarter full. And keep in mind, this is something that you're gonna want to kind of tune with based on your driving style, the terrain you're driving, even like the, the type of uh, tires, if you're doing aftermarket wheels and tires, that could have an effect on how your vehicle handles. So you might wanna tune uh, with that. I originally did a uh, about a half of a earplug in my center diff because it was pretty low. I recently took part of that out and I added something a little bit lighter, just experimenting, and I actually do like the way it handles better. I don't know exactly where I'm at now. Like I said, it was probably half 20 mil, half earplug. Now it's I removed part of that and I added million weight in there to thin it out a little bit. So I'm not sure exactly where it's at. So I'm kind of just testing as I go, but I do kind of like it. It tends to kind of settle into the corners a little bit better with the lighter fluid in the center. And I'm not really getting a big ballooning issue, so I'm happy with that. But anyway, don't be afraid to test and tune with that just to get the setting that that you want personally. Um, next, we're gonna get on to uh, tires. So check your tire glue. Uh, definitely seen a lot of guys uh, reporting issues where their tires are coming unglued. So I've had zero issues with mine. I must be lucky. It was a good day at the factory, I guess. They glued them up nice and tight. No issues, but it's a good idea. Keep an eye on it. Every couple packs you drive, or if you notice some kind of weird wobbling going on, double check that and um, just glue them up if, if need be. On the subject of tires as well is uh, venting. My recommendation is to seal the vents that are on the inside of the wheels and go ahead and vent the tire itself. There's a lot of different techniques. I like to use a little Dremel bit. It's about an eighth inch thick. It's like a, a metal, like uh, with a diamond grinding tip. And I just kind of, you know, get it at a good speed and just kind of, kind of just bores a hole right through. I actually went right through the center of this um, knob here, the large knob in the center. And then I use some shoe goo on the inside of mine just to tape them up. But they're nice and vented. It prevents any water from getting in, either when you're you know, driving it or cleaning the car. It prevents water from getting in through the outside. And anything that does get in will kind of fling out through the holes. So a good thing to do that. Um, another great tip, you can go back and check out my previous video, is to balance the, the, uh, the wheels. Take some clay and I'll show you. If you want more details, uh, check out that video for sure. But it makes a huge difference. It's a very easy to do it's very inexpensive to do but it really pays off uh, a lot when you go to run this car and you see how smooth it is when you have all your wheels balanced properly it makes a huge difference driving it i highly recommend doing that um, next on the list zip tie the uh the motor leads here and i've seen plenty of guys where somehow whatever happens either from the an impact force but one of these leads gets down into the pinion area under the cover and it gets chewed up so you'll see they should all be zip tied to the chassis at the bottom here from the factory. I just simply added another zip tie right near the top here to hold them all together. And they really, they can wiggle around a little bit, but there's no way they're all gonna get jammed down into that uh, near the pinion there. So super easy to do. Just, you know, it just prevents any, you know, dumb issues going forward. Um, motor fan, I would definitely recommend doing a fan on here. I was running this the other day in about 60, 65 degree temperatures, and this was hot to the touch already. So that's only gonna get worse as the temperatures increase during the summer months. So I would definitely recommend this as the bare minimum. You can go back and check out my previous video and check out the fan that I installed. Uh, I'm gonna wait and see if I do start having any um, overheating issues. I'm gonna go with either a dual fan or just a higher velocity uh, single fan. So I would definitely recommend doing something as a minimum anyway. Um, next, uh, next is one of the more common issues we're seeing out there. Um, and it's probably a little bit more involved to, um, to, to fix this. And that's the, the hinge pins. So the outer hinge pins at the end of the arms here by the axle carriers have been snapping. They're very brittle, they're very weak. Uh, in fact, there was one guy that said his, he had, he, this was broken out of the box. So believe it or not, I don't know if they just over tightened it in the factory, but it's pretty crazy. But I broke two of them already on little jumps that I don't think should have really broken anything. But um, go back and check out my previous, previous video and you could see my fix for that was just to use some M4 by 60 screws that I got off Amazon and I linked all that stuff in the video. 
Uh, you can do X-Max uh, hinge pins by RPM, make some for the X-Max. Uh, you can use those on the rear outers. I'm not sure if anything else fits. I don't think the front fit. I'm not even sure. I think the inner ones will actually work um, if you use X-Max. RPM doesn't make the inner ones, but if you use X-Max inner hinge pins, I think they need to be trimmed down a little bit, but don't quote me on that. I haven't tried it yet. That's just what I've seen people recommending. And I think there's some Arma inner pins that work as well, but I've only had issues with the outers, so I haven't done anything with the inner ones yet. I'm gonna wait and see if I start having issues. Um, I'll try to find something and then I'll update that in my next um, volume three. That's only if I have issues right now, this seems to have done the trick. Uh, so um, that's that. Uh, axle pins, another seemingly more common issue lately. The pins, and it's only been in my front axles here, the pins uh, in the front dog bone here that ride in the outdrive cups, my, the pins have been sliding out. It happened to me on my first two axles. They sent me two more, happened on those two. They just sent me two more I haven't tried yet. Check out my other video if you want to see my fix for that, and it's been perfect ever since. But Traxxas is aware, there's a lot more guys reporting this, so if you're having that issue, let them know so that they know how widespread this is and they can maybe hopefully do some kind of recall thing or at least send everybody updated versions of these so we're not gonna have that problem going forward. Um, but keep an eye on those, keep an eye, check all the pins, check the, the fronts, check the centers, check the rears, and just make sure those pins aren't migrating out of the dog bone at all. Um, next thing, uh, very simply, uh, if you wanna do a bumper, my uh, noodle bumper here has been working out great. I'm still really happy with it. Yeah, I'm getting a little, uh, you know, torn up on the front here, but no big deal. I'll probably go in and throw some uh, some Gorilla Tape on there or shoe glue and mesh or something. But at this point, I kind of like it with no front bumper. Uh, it's just been working out well for me. There's nothing on the front to catch or dig in. And, you know, if you take like a hard nose landing or something. But there are guys who are doing, apparently you can modify a slash bumper. I think you just have to kind of elongate two of the holes and you can make that work on the front. Uh, so that's an option if you want to do that. Um, as far as upgrades that are available for this thing right now, I already upgraded my rear uh, ring gear and pinion gear to the machined ones from Traxxas, which are part number 9579R. It's the same exact part number front and rear, super easy to install. Believe it or not, I have a video on it. Uh, so if you wanna check that out, go ahead and take a peek at that. Um, definitely seems like a much stronger gear. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit thinner, but much better material, so it's gonna hold up better um, in the long run. At this time, there is no upgrade that I'm aware of for the spur gear, you know, so hopefully that's not going to be an issue. I've had no issues with it, um, but there have been a few others that, especially if your mesh goes out of whack at all, you could have issues with that. So I'm thinking in the near future, we'll see something from probably M2C as an upgrade for that. So, but for now, fingers crossed, no issues. Um, servo, I upgraded my servo. Um, I'll throw a link down in there to the one that I use. This is something I've just been trying. It's a full aluminum case. It was about 45 bucks off of Amazon. It's this 9iMod DSC 45MG. So it's a 45kg if you run it, I think, at 8.4 volts. This is lower, of course, because I'm still only running at 6 volts from the ESC. But it works really well. The speed is good. It's, it's way better than the stock one. Um, the stock one, I'm starting to get a ton of play in it. So... Uh, even though like the torque is pretty good on it, it's very slow and uh, I see a lot of guys reporting that as you move it, you can see the whole shaft, you know, where the servo horn mounts to it kind of wobbling. So I don't think it's really um, too high quality bearing inside there. And it's a plastic um, top piece, which you always run the risk of um, cracking on like a hard impact. Um, so that's that. Choose what you will. How about however much money you want to spend on a servo? That's up to you guys. There's a lot of good options out there. Um, the DS Servo 35kg on Amazon is a good choice too. That's pretty cheap, even cheaper than this one. Um, and the only other thing I'll, I'll mention right now, the shot caps. I have seen, yeah, I've seen a couple guys break the shot caps, but who knows you know, what kind of impact it was. I don't know that it's really a necessary thing, but if you choose to, hey, if you wanna just change the color of it and make your truck look fancy or match it to the rest of your anodized stuff, you can go ahead and do that, but it's like 50 bucks for the aluminum shot caps. Definitely gonna add some strength and it's just one less thing that's gonna break. I'm thinking I'm just gonna wait and see at this point. I have some other things I wanna spend money on first before I do these. 
but if and when I do crack one, I will definitely just upgrade to the aluminum. Uh, and that's about it, guys. That's it for the list right now. If you guys know of anything else out there, uh, definitely let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll add it to volume three. But so far, um, with these going through this list, this truck has been a solid performer now for the past two, two and a half times. I say half because I had an issue the, the one time, but um, the last two times I ran this, it was perfect. Uh, no, zero issues with anything. I had a blast. I really love driving this truck, super fun. And now it seems like most of the initial issues have been taken care of and guys have figured out, you know, hopefully, you know, thanks to, to some of the videos that I've been putting out there, guys have been figuring out these little things to kind of eliminate some of these issues. And it seems like a lot of the more recent videos I'm seeing, guys are really out there bashing these things hard and they're holding up great. So that's a good sign. And I think with some aftermarket stuff um, coming uh, to the market soon, this thing will be a really solid machine. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Check back in. I'm going to see what else I can figure out on this thing. But for the time being, hopefully I'll just have some really fun and cool uh, running video coming up. And uh, we'll see. Hopefully this thing continues to perform as well as it did the past two runs. So um, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if this video is helpful or you like some of my other videos, please subscribe. I notice a lot of you guys watching these are still not subscribed. I really want to try to get to that uh, thousand subscriber mark. That'd be really cool. So uh, I like hearing from you guys. Leave some comments. You have questions on anything. Um, I've still been doing a pretty good job about getting back to everybody. So, But anyway, thanks for checking it out, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.